Okay, we are talking about a bomb and you know environment plays a role somehow to the type of umbo we we'll choose to go ahead with. Uh, for someone, I want you to tell someone who uh, maybe, for me personally, I grew up in Onisha Anambra, and you know that their own type of umbo is more like uh, go to the shop, trading. And for me now, I chose uh, the career path of uh, being a brand strategist. And also I promote climate change. So my work is more like sitting on my computer working. And also when I even want to make some maybe advocacy, I want to design a campaign or something, it's still on my computer. Then I go out to maybe meet the audience I will talk to. So, um, for someone who is in such environment where it's just about go to shop, trade, and all that, you'll be feeling somehow as if you are alone and somewhat discouraging. Uh, you, you, have been, you are feeling the discouraging spirit. So, what can you tell such person that for him to continue doing what he's doing, irrespective of the environment he fights himself? Okay, so I think one of the most critical things that anybody should do for themselves is to tell themselves the truth, you know. And the truth is, what do you want to do? Is it what you really want to do? Because if you are convinced about it, you'll be very satisfied and you'll be very um, focused at hustling. And because why I'm saying this is because if by 2007, when I finished my bachelor's, I had left Enugu, because... The truth is, what people say is that the opportunities in Enugu are limited. Um, you would hustle to go to Lagos or go to Abuja. You know, I, I know when I'm in some international meetings, they ask me, are you from Lagos or Abuja? And I say, no, I'm from Enugu. And they say, where is Enugu? I say, it's one of the states in Nigeria. Do you understand? And I've always said that I am going to work hard to be able to be successful from Enugu. And this means that, in fact, being from a low and middle income country means that if your counterparts in the US are working one hour, it means that you want to work three to four hours on that one task that they will finish in one hour. Because there are a lot of factors that are impeding you. You know, for example, now we can't even use our Naira card to purchase anything online. We don't even have 24 hours access to power. You have to hustle and get water from water gallery in Enugu before you can get water. You are not, you understand, there are a lot of other things that are taking on on your time. So if you have to work in Enugu, you have to work twice as hard. But imagine that if I tell you the amount of pro projects that I have handled in, within my portfolio in the last 18 years, you'll be so surprised that this quantity of funds can actually come into this town. But also, it didn't go without hard work or my pain or trying to think that other people are not as successful as I am. I, I, I am not as successful as others, you know. But it goes with that concept of telling myself the thing that I want to do. I want to be successful being a clinical psychologist and a child rights advocate from Enugu. And what it means is that we are selling the city, we are selling where we come from, and we are giving, most importantly, encouragement to a lot of people who are coming behind us who may have thought that it wasn't possible. We may be the pace setters that would, that would till the ground for all others to follow, but it comes with a sacrifice. You know, um, I remember Superman said, uh, it was in Spider-Man, when, uh, before Spider-Man went, the fourth, or one of the first things that he did, the uncle told him and said, with much power comes a lot of responsibility, you know? So because you, we feel like we are superheroes, you know, um, trying to do the things we do, but the responsibilities that we have is a lot of work and you have to tell yourself the truth. But I feel, and I am not feeling somehow to say this because it's some, there's some cliche that is expected of people, but I'll leave that cliche. If people who do music, tell us that they smoke to be able to get high, to get inspiration. 
I can tell you some of where my inspiration comes. And a lot of my inspiration comes from the Holy Spirit. Um, I say this not with any kind of trying to be too Christian about things, but I've been in a prayer meeting and Holy Spirit said, write a, a, write a book chapter, write an article on child rights in Nigeria. And I took on and did that child rights article in Nigeria. It took me two years, one year to finish writing that article. And it took me about three years to eventually publish. But one of the things that happened that made me realize that this thing was a reality was that I was sitting in my office after I had written the article and tried to publish it in a lot of journals, international journals, and they rejected it. And then this group of people sent me an email and says, we are from the University of Berkeley. We would like you to write an article on child rights in Nigeria. Do you understand? And I have evidence for this. If I go to my laptop, I'll show you when I created the article and when I submitted it to journals that rejected them and when I got that first email asking me to submit that article. And when I submitted, if you go to my research gate now, that article is my most cited, most reviewed article on, on my handle on research gate. So there are a lot of inspiration that comes from a lot of times, some places that we do not access all the time. For me, I don't take alcohol, I don't drink, I don't smoke. My own inspiration comes maybe when I'm communing with my God and the Holy Spirit tells me, go this direction. And sincerely, when I go that direction, it may not materialize in the first one, two years, but by the time it comes out, it comes out big. So I think <clears throat> that tapping the supernatural is also very important. And my supernatural is not uh, all those other ones, but the Holy Spirit, yeah. <laughs>